Thank you for tuning in for the review of the best products available today. These models were chosen from a large variety of products based on their overall performance and review of thousands of consumers that have purchased them through countless hours of research, side-by-side -side comparisons. It's believed that the following products are indeed the best on the market today. Please take a moment to follow the product links listed below to each product for more information. Sit back and relax while you watch the best highly recommended products for this year. It's Tyler the Antenna Man. Today I'm going to test out and review this Clearstream Eclipse indoor TV antenna. So looking at the front of the antenna, it kind of looks like it might be thick. It's actually very, very thin and reminds me of the junk generic flat antennas that I tell people not to buy, this one, but they buy them anyway. However, I'm hoping to get slightly better results with this antenna, especially because it has a dedicated coaxial cable output so you can get a much better connection compared to the paper thin coaxial cable on this junk antenna. Looking at the design of this antenna, it looks like a pretty simple UHF loop without any VHF elements. So I'm not sure how well it's going to do with VHF TV stations. But then again, anything is possible because there are 150 mile range high definition digital antennas out there. What is VHF and UHF? Those of you that have followed my channel for a while are probably tired of me explaining it in all of my videos. But the fact of the matter stands that the average person who cuts the cord for the first time looking up HD antenna, potentially seeing me on this video for the first time doesn't know the difference, so I have to explain it. VHF TV stations broadcast on channels 2 through 13. And they typically require a longer antenna element like this little rabbit ear element on this antenna. While UHF TV stations broadcast on channels 14 and above and are usually picked up better with smaller antennas like this little loop and the loop on this antenna's direct clear stream model. Woo, ghost antenna, change colors on everyone. This is actually just the other side of it and you can use either side when setting it up. It's kind of cool that it has this white because if you're putting it on a wall, you can barely see it. Anyway, back to VHF and UHF. VHF TV stations channels 2 through 13 require a longer element, and UHF TV stations 14 above smaller elements. And it's important to note that most TV stations do not broadcast on the channel number you may know them as. So for example, if you have an NBC5 in your area, they might actually be broadcasting on the UHF band. The same holds true for most TV stations across the country. I'm now going to test out this antenna in the same location I've tested out various other indoor antenna models on my YouTube channel. The TV stations I'll be testing out are about 45 miles away from me, both on the VHF and UHF band. Here's a list of the stations along with their RF channels and their signal strengths on the last two antennas I tested out on my YouTube channel. On the left side, you'll see the type of diffraction on the TV station. One edge means single edge diffraction or one ridge between me and the transmitter weakening the signal. LOS means line of sight with virtually no obstructions in the way. The signal strength on WNEP, which broadcasts on RF channel 50, was about the same with the Eclipse compared to the Max-V, maybe like 1 or 2% lower, but not really much of a difference. The signal strength on WYOU, which broadcasts on VHF channel 13, was lower on this antenna compared to the last two antenna models I tested out, likely because it does not have any VHF elements. WBRE, which broadcasts on VHF channel 11, was not even able to be picked up with this antenna, likely because it doesn't have VHF elements. The signal strength on Fox 56, which broadcasts on UHF channel 22, was about the same on this antenna compared to the last two antennas. It's looking like this antenna is definitely optimized for the UHF band. This antenna was not able to pick up WNJB's low-powered repeater station. Then again, very few antenna models can pick up this very low-powered station that has about the output power of a microwave. 
So as you can see from my test, this antenna performed pretty well on the UHF band, but did not do that well on the VHF band, exactly as I expected it to without the proper VHF elements. Now there are some markets that have all the major TV stations on the UHF band. Maybe they only have like one religious station on the VHF band that no one really cares much about. If that's the case, this antenna would work pretty well for you, especially because it's almost invisible putting it on the wall. I know there's a lot of you out there that don't like the look of any antenna. I never got that. Why are people ashamed to show the fact that they have cut the cord and saved themselves from cable? The fact that they no longer have to pay for channels on a monthly basis. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people complain about the looks of antennas. Oh, it's ugly. I don't want it by my TV set. I don't want it on my roof. You know what's a lot uglier than any antenna, including the world's largest antenna? A cable bill. The fact that someone is paying hundreds of dollars a month for TV stations that are available free in the air. That's pretty ugly if you ask me. Hope some of you enjoyed my rant. I haven't gone on one in a long time. It's definitely overdue. I've been too polite and conservative in some videos of mine. This one, I'm just kind of be a little bit more of myself and say how I really feel about, you know, people that are paying thousands of dollars a year for cable. It's stupid. Stop doing it. Actually, just get an antenna and be done with cable forever. The DB8E antenna from Antennas Direct has a range of up to 70 miles giving you the ability to receive a multitude of free, high-definition local broadcast networks with expanded programming. The DB8E can be installed in your attic or outdoors and comes with everything you see here. Today, we will focus on exterior installation. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver, an adjustable wrench, some coaxial cable, and a mast. First, align the elements on one side of the antenna with the holes on the corresponding reflector panel. Use the five and a half inch bolts with aluminum sleeves to attach the two pieces together. Tighten the bolts to the nuts using a screwdriver and adjustable wrench. Then do the same for the other side. With the arrows pointing upward on the swing brackets, tighten the nuts with a wrench. Now, attach the combiner and the mast clamp to the crossbar mount with the factory installed screws pointing upward. Then, attach coaxial cables to the combiner. After attaching the coaxial cables, and with arrows pointing upward on the crossbar, attach one panel at a time using nuts with the flange side down. Then, route the left and right coaxial cables through their respective panels and attach the F connector on each panel, but do not over tighten. Slide up the weather boot on each side. Use the small zip ties to affix the cables to their corresponding reflectors. Verify that both panels are aligned to the crossbar mount. Before installing the antenna outdoors, it is important to test the antenna in a location that offers the clearest possible view in the direction of the broadcast towers, avoiding placement around tall trees and buildings. Connect one end of the coaxial cable to your antenna and the other end to your television. Visit antennapoint.com and enter your zip code. You will find a list of stations, distance and a precise compass heading. 
If you don't have a compass, simply download a free app from your preferred app store to your smartphone. Position the antenna so that it's facing the broadcast towers. Then, on your television, make sure that your input is set to antenna or air, and then scan for channels. If you are not receiving signals for the available channels, you may need to reposition your antenna and rescan. Before installing your antenna, make sure the mast is adjusted so that it's vertical. Slide the antenna over the top of the mast and tighten loosely into place. Using a zip tie, secure the coaxial cable loosely to the mast. Turn your antenna in the direction which resulted in the most channels during your test scan and tighten the zip tie. It is important to rescan your TV for the available channels once the antenna is installed. And that's it. You are now ready to receive free over-the-air television with unsurpassed quality compared to cable or satellite.